This is Twit. How hard was this book for you to write? Did this? You've done a few books now. Did this one yeah. come easily? Does it? Was it difficult? At first, it was very difficult because I wasn't sure. I mean, I made this book out of the junkyard of my mind. These were all different ideas. I mean, I had one idea for a mass conversion spaceship fuel, another idea for a character uh, who we didn't talk about at all, Ava Strat. Um, oh, oh, love her. And yeah, by yeah, the I way, the audio book, Ray Porter does her justice, I think. I don't know how you yeah, heard yeah. it in your head, but boy, it she was great in the audio. Book. Yeah, she doesn't mess around. Um, and, and she was a character, I mean, she had a different name, but I, I took her from another story idea that I never developed. And then um, first contact story I always want to do. And also a guy waking up aboard a ship with amnesia. So these are all unrelated ideas that oh, I glued together. Interesting. And it seems seamless, but there's a lot of spackle in the seams. Um, so it worked out well. But at first, when I was first writing it, I'm like, I don't know if this works. We'll see. But once I got Ryland's personality down, yeah. like I said, about five chapters in, then yeah. I'm like, okay, okay, I think this is working. And and I knew the ending. And so I'm like, okay, I got it. I'm going to get to that ending and it'll be awesome. Is there, um, uh, forgive me for not knowing, but is there science in this that that is impossible or made up? Or it some, seems like most of it's pretty realistic. Um, yes, uh, you have to go down to the subatomic level to find the BS, but it's there. <laughs> um, Good place to hide it. Yeah, it's it's well hidden. Basically, um, the, it, there's nothing in the book that is provably impossible, <laughs> but there are things in the book which are probably impossible. And one of them is um, a, a, a quantum effect that I made up called super cross-sectionality. And I, the, the cell membrane of astrophage has a, a feature that makes it impossible to quantum tunnel through. Yeah. So it's not possible for something to be on one side, then be on the other side right. without interacting with the membrane. Um, now, a neutrino can effortlessly pass through the entire planet Earth without touching anything. Like right now, you're having about 100 trillion neutrinos passing through you um, every second. But they're tiny, so they just... Whoop. Well, and they don't interact with it. I mean, it's right. they are famously hard to interact with. But an astrophage cell membrane can keep neutrinos inside. It stores them. And that's how it stores the energy that it gets. It, yeah, yeah it, I thought the physics of astrophage must be kind of kind of tough to solve. Well, that there's problem. two there's there's two BSs in it. First off, the super cross sectionality of the cell membrane that allows astrophage to keep neutrinos, right? right? And second off, neutrinogenesis, which is um, the physics and math and everything works out. But what it is is. Um, Two uh, hydrogen ions, basically protons, smack into each other, and the kinetic energy of that collision, instead of just being an elastic collision, the kinetic energy is becomes two neutrinos going opposite directions. So the energy and the momentum are conserved, and the you know the the energy is taken from the kinetic energy of the protons, so they'll slow down a bit. So that means that's why the critical temperature of astrophage is about 97 degrees, because if you have hydrogen gas at 97 degrees, they will be colliding with each other with the right kinetic energy to create two neutrinos. So that's all very, like the math all works out, but there's no reason to believe that would actually happen. <laughs> Well, that's not much suspension of disbelief. I don't, I don't, that's an easy Well, one. there is, there is something in real life called pair production, which is where um, you can have like, if you have like a heavy atomic nucleus, like a uranium atom or something like that, and a photon goes by, um, it can, it is possible and it happens. It'll be like a gamma ray or something, but it can go by and it can, that energy can become an electron and a positron um, going opposite directions, and then and the nucleus of that atom also gains a little bit of so, um, see, it, and so that balances mass and energy and everything like that. So it is possible for an energy to kind of randomly take other forms like that. So I just said, eh, here we have you know neutrinos get created under the right circumstances with this. So that's that's those are the physically highly questionable things. 
Also, Xenonite is... I love Xenonite, but... Xenonite is possible. The really? theoretical it, it is... Well, I mean, I don't know <laughs> what the molecules would be, but it is within the limits of the physically possible um, tensile strength. Interesting. Like, there's a calculation. I don't understand all of it, but they said this... This value here is the maximum imaginable tensile strength. Like, it is not physically possible to make a material that has a higher tensile strength than this. And xenonite's tensile strength is lower. 